Hi there, I'm Lucy Whitaker. I'm a specialist motoring solicitor and today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, totting up of penalty points, disqualifications and exceptional hardship. Most people will know that if you accumulate 12 or more points within a three year period, the court has to disqualify you for a minimum period of six months um, subject to certain exceptions. Points are relevant if they were accumulated in the last three years and haven't been used in an earlier disqualification. You can't be disqualified twice using the same points. This process is commonly known as totting up. Unlike other types of disqualification, the point of totting up is to, repeat, is to punish repeat offenders. So the court must disqualify you for not less than six months unless the court is satisfied taking into account all the circumstances that there are grounds for mitigating the normal consequences of the conviction. In plain English, what this means is would the impact of disqualification be so severe that it would justify the court's decision not to disqualify you? The main ground put forward is the concept of exceptional hardship. It's important to note that exceptional hardship depends on the consequences of a disqualification. There are no set criteria of what amounts to exceptional hardship. It's a matter for the court to decide in each case. There is, however, or there are, however, a, a list of factors which the court cannot take into account. And one such factor is, is anything that is alleged to make the offence or any of the offences not as serious. Many people fall into the trap of trying to rely on this as a ground if they don't know the law or are not represented. This means that trying to argue that because, for example, you are only doing 35 miles per hour on a quiet road in uh, early in the morning when there was no one around, it's not strictly relevant on its own to exceptional hardship. It can't be taken into account by the court for this purpose. Another of the factors that can't be taken into account is hardship other than exceptional hardship. Exceptional hardship does require something out of the ordinary. Most people nowadays will find daily life far more difficult if they don't have a driving license. However, the threshold for exceptional hardship is quite high so to be successful you need to demonstrate why the impact to you or others would be greater than usual. Exceptional hardship arguments are usually put forward on financial grounds but not always. Um, the most common uh, argument is that it would result in the loss of employment. The law doesn't restrict the argument to finances though. Um, but loss of job, it's important to note, is not necessarily enough to demonstrate exceptional hardship. This was confirmed by the courts in the case of Brennan and McKay, where that case involved a taxi driver who would be likely to lose his job as a result of disqualification. The court rejected his argument, saying there was nothing in his account which took his case out of the ordinary. And they said it was missing that additional element over and above loss of employment, which may involve reflected hardship of a serious kind um, upon the accused business or his family or his long term future prospects. And this case, case is regularly cited in the courts. There are virtually no reported cases where exceptional hardship has been put forward on grounds other than finances but it is possible to be successful using other grounds and indeed I have presented successful arguments on grounds such as the inability to care for others and the impact to mental health. So what if the court finds exceptional hardship? Well if the court finds exceptional hardship it has the discretion either to not disqualify you at all or to disqualify you for a period shorter than six months. If the court chooses not to disqualify you, you should be aware that the points will remain on your licence and therefore should you receive any more penalty points so that your total reaches 12 or more within three years, you'll be back in the same position. 
next time you will not be able to argue exceptional hardship again on these grounds. If the court finds exceptional hardship, the other option is to impose a disqualification shorter than six months. The benefit of this outcome is that the points would be wiped from your licence. This is a decision for the court and you can't choose which outcome you prefer. However, it is sometimes possible to encourage the court to make a decision one way or another. When talking about the accumulation of points, also known as, as the totting up provisions, what is important to note is just the three year period runs from the date of the offence to the date of the offence. Therefore, it does not matter if those points have dropped out off your licence if they've expired by the time that you reach the court hearing. If you find yourself in a position where you're facing a totting up disqualification, you'll normally receive a single justice procedure notice from the court, suggesting that you can plead guilty by post. If you want to challenge a six month disqualification and make representations, this will require a court hearing and you will have to give evidence from the witness box. This argument cannot be put forward in writing alone. You may be cross-examined by the prosecution and ask questions by the magistrates. So it's important you are prepared for this and know what evidence uh, you should take with you to court. If you have an exceptional hardship hearing or have received a notice of proposed driving disqualification and would like further help or advice, please contact me, Lucy Whitaker, using the details on the screen. Thank you for listening. I hope you found it helpful.